Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice system of equations. This video is going to be a video response to prime Newton's. He used some methods. In this video, I'm going to be using different things. Anyways, we have this problem, x plus y plus z equals three, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals three, and x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed equals three. Now, our goal is to solve for x, y, z, and this problem is actually from USAMO 1973. USAMO is a nine-hour test, just like the IMO, the International Math Olympiad, which students take in two days in four and a half hours each, and they are supposed to solve six problems in two days. So e for every problem, they have an hour and a half. Half of that time they usually spend on you know, coming up with a plan, kind of setting up the solution, and then the rest is usually spent on uh, the solution, writing the solution. And then you have to send your solutions to Mathematical Association of America, so on and so forth, and they grade the papers. How do I know this? Because I got to proctor the USAMO one year. Maybe we can talk about this later, but anyways, let's get to the problem. So, we have this interesting system. We have x plus y plus z equals 3. Sum of squares and sum of cubes are also 3. And we're supposed to find the set of complex numbers, all solutions to the system. That's what makes this problem actually pretty interesting. There's obviously more than one way to go about it. I'll show you some alternatives. Hopefully you'll like it. Great, let's get started. So since we are given the sum and we are also given the sum of squares, it would make sense if we squared both sides, right? Let's go ahead and square this. This gives us, as you should know, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And then we have the x, y, x, z, y, z. Each of them comes twice. So we're gonna write it as two times the quantity x, y plus x, z plus y, z. And this is equal to nine because three squared is equal to nine. We also know that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 3. So what does that mean? If you do the math, 9 minus 3 is equal to 6. If you divide 6 by 2, you get a 3. So from here, we get something super helpful, which is xy plus xz plus yz equals 3. Hmm, that's interesting. A lot of these equations are equal to 3. Is that a coincidence? Okay, let's find out. So... What can I do with this information, right? So I have four equations, three unknowns. Come on, we should be able to do something. So you can go ahead, one of the things, actually there are two main things you can do. One of them is you can just go ahead and take x plus y plus z and cube it, or you can take the sum of squares and the sum and just multiply them. I mean, this makes a lot of sense because this is definitely gonna give us x cubed, y cubed, z cubed, but it's also, uh, it's also gonna give us additional terms. What are we gonna do with them? This is where I kinda differ, okay? Let's go ahead and write this down. If you do the math, again, distribute the property, you can figure this out pretty easily. Notice that x squared is being multiplied by y and z, so that kinda generates terms like x squared y plus xy squared plus x squared z plus xz squared, and they kinda come in pairs, and then y squared z plus yz squared. Notice that I made them pairs because they are, and it's actually gonna be super helpful. Now notice that these are both three, so this should equal nine. We also know that this is equal to three, and now the rest of it, I wanna group them. I wanna make groups of two, and kind of factor them in each group. So for example, the first one is gonna be xy multiplied by x plus y, second one is gonna be xz multiplied by x plus z, and then the last one is gonna be yz times y plus z. Beautiful, so far so good. Now, we can definitely factor this, but how? We must use a very important identity, and that's gonna come out from the original system. Remember, what x plus y plus z is, it's equal to three, right? So, this allows us to write the sum of the two variables in terms of the third one. In other words, x plus y is equal to three minus z, this can be written as three minus y, and this can be written as three minus x. Awesome. But now we have nine equals three plus something. So this thing right here is equal to six. Let's go ahead and write it down. X, Y multiplied by three minus Z plus X, Z multiplied by three minus Y 
plus yz multiplied by 3 minus x after making all the placements is supposed to equal 9 because, I mean 6, because 9 minus 3 is equal to 6. Make sense? Good, good. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to distribute, but let me um, keep a long story short. You're going to get 3xy, 3xz, and 3yz. In other words, you're going to get this sum three times, and we know what it is, remember? And then minus, we're going to get the xyz three times. Hmm, that's interesting. Does that look familiar? Somewhat. Now, remember, we found that xy plus xz plus yz is equal to 3, right? So this is equal to 3. 3 times 3 is equal to 9. 9 minus what equals 6? The answer is 3. So xyz is equal to 1. Beautiful. So this gives us xyz equals 1. But what is so significant about it? And yes, we'll talk about it. But before that, I want to show you something else. So we're going to talk about a lot of uh, different identities. Make sure you know these because they are very helpful in solving these kinds of Olympiad problems. So let's go ahead and consider the cube of x plus y plus z. Obviously, you can expand it using a formula. You can treat these two as a single term and so on and so forth. Don't worry, I did the work for you. And this gives us the following. x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed. And then you get something super interesting. 3 times the quantity x plus y, x plus z, and y plus z. Now, from here we do know a couple things. For example, this is equal to 3, so 3 cubed is 27. This is also 3, 27 minus 3 is equal to 18, right? Wait a minute, that's not right. 27 minus 3 is equal to 24, divide 24 by 3, you get 8. So that su stuff is supposed to equal 8, but does this help? No, I don't think so. It just verifies the previous identities. So I think here is the best approach, and in my opinion, we can directly get to the solution from here. Okay? So here's how it goes. Remember when we solved for x, y, x, z, y, z, we noticed that it's also equal to 3, right? So this kind of means that, okay, these two things are equal, right? Because they're both equal to 3. If two things are equal, to the same thing, then they're equal. Make sense? Now we're going to do, if you're ready, we're going to do a little bit of hocus pocus here. Are you ready? This is where the fun part comes in, okay? So buckle up. We're going to multiply everything by 2. And you might be like, why? You'll see in a little bit. Okay, be patient. So we're going to get something like this. Did that ring a bell? And then, obviously, don't worry about the 3 anymore. All I care about is the equality. Now, we're going to put everything on the left-hand side, and notice that we're going to get something like this, right? I mean, think about it. I can definitely break it down. Take 1x squared, take 1y squared along with this, and you're going to get a perfect square. And you know what? It's just perfect. And we can do this for every pair. So we're going to get x squared minus 2xy plus y squared, and we're going to get what else? Let's see, uh, we're going to get y squared minus 2yz plus z squared. And then finally, we're going to get z squared minus 2zx plus x squared. Notice that if you add all of these up, you're going to get this expression, of course, when everything is on the left-hand side. Make sense? This is really nice. You know why? Because first of all, this is equal to 0, and then you're adding three perfect squares. It couldn't get any better, trust me. Now, you have x minus y squared, y minus z squared, and z minus x squared and the sum is equal to zero. If you're dealing with real numbers, this sum is zero only if each number is equal to zero, right? Great. Now, set each of these equal to zero, you're going to get what? x equals y equals z. And what does that mean? It just means that they're all equal, which implies that x is equal to y is equal to z, and they're all equal to one. All the solutions are real. That's it. Case closed. But let's talk about something else because that's also pretty cool. You might be questioning, like, okay, after finding x, y, z equals 1, I'm not convinced that this is going to work because you know why? What if x, y, x minus y is not real? Then we're not going to be able to get the 0 from here, right? So what do we do? Here's what we're going to do then. We're going to use another beautiful identity. I think this is just amazing. And think about the, uh, the cortic version of this. It's just mind-blowing. Anyways. I can't tell you enough about this because this is just awesome. So now, we're going to go ahead and do something with this expression now. When you factor this, by the way, when I first saw this expression many years ago, obviously, this came up in, in so many problems, I'm like, are you serious? Like, the left-hand side cannot be factorable. But turns out 
It is. Okay, beautiful. So it, it's factored like this though. So here's the second factor. You're probably expecting something quadratic, right? Because the first factor is linear. Now take a look at this. If x, y, z is equal to 1, this is equal to 3. 3 minus 3 is equal to what? 0. So this is 0. But we know that x plus y plus z is not 0 because it's given as 3. So this must be 0, which gives us the exact same thing we just found. x equals y equals z. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. And before I forget, never stop learning. Bye-bye.